Phil Chilibeck, a professor at the University of Saskatchewan's College of Kinesiology, is leading a new study to find out more. His team is looking at how different types of milk, dairy, almond, and yellow peas, affect bone health in adults over 50. The goal? To see if protein from peas could be a new tool in the fight against osteoporosis. Phil joins me now in studio. Good morning, Phil. Good morning. Before we talk about your study, which I'm really excited to talk about, how is milk from peas actually made? So I'm not completely aware of the processing that goes on, but, um, you know, you can buy uh, beverages that are based uh, strictly on peas, or you can buy uh, almond milk that has pea protein added to it. So you've looked at milk proteins before. What first got you interested in, in studying milk from peas for bone health? So we were originally looking at, you know, the benefits of giving dairy milk to adolescent athletes after their resistance training sessions. So we recruited a group of uh, athletic adolescents, and we were interested to see if the milk could improve their body composition and strength compared to plant-based beverages. So the plant-based beverage in included, you know, a pea-based milk, which was matched to protein to the dairy milk, and then an almond milk, which is very low in protein. Uh, so we thought the dairy milk would be superior with regards to body composition and strength improvements. On the side, we also looked at uh, bone measurements. And after six months, we were surprised that the pea-based beverage actually did quite well, uh, just as good as the dairy milk. And in some measures at the hip, uh, actually did superior. And both the dairy milk and, and the pea base were superior to the low-protein almond milk. Interesting. So this new study you're working on focuses on older adults. Why is this group particularly important for this kind of research? So we're focusing on older, older adults because they're more concerned with their bone health. I would say bone health is important right across the lifespan. So, you know, with children and adolescents, it's important to build up a good bone bank, you know, as you enter into later life so that you have uh, more bone, to, you know, uh, before you start losing bone. Uh, but for older adults, uh, they're probably more concerned with, uh, you know, the development of osteoporosis and risk of fracture. Uh, and so they're an audience that would be, I would say, would be more interested in focusing on bone health and uh, doing lifestyle changes that can improve their bone health. Yeah. How will the study work? Can you walk us through what the participants will be doing? So a big part of the study is uh, exercise training. So we'll have the participants doing supervised resistance training three times a week. Uh, and, you know, that's the main stimulus for improving muscle mass and improving bone. And the milk kind of adds to that. So the milk can provide, uh, you know, protein, uh, that's needed when your protein synthesis is stimulated by exercise. Uh, so consuming the, you know, the protein-based beverages after their training sessions could be beneficial for building muscle and uh, hopefully for building bone as well. And these folks are over 50, is that right? Yeah, so this is going to be men and women over 50. Uh, you know, women are probably more concerned with osteoporosis than men. It, it affects more women. But if men, you know, men also lose bone as they age, and when men get osteoporosis, they actually handle it worse than women do. So if they have a fracture, usually they have worse outcomes. Uh, they're less likely to recover compared to women for some reason. So if the results show end up showing that pulse milk supports bone health, as you found in, in your previous research, what could that mean for osteoporosis treatment and prevention as well? It's just another weapon in your war chest against uh, the loss of bone, so defending your your bone health. Uh, so, you know, people know that dairy milk is beneficial. You know, it's high in calcium, vitamin D, and protein. Uh, you know, so this pea-based milk is just another, you know, tool, you know, to use uh, for protecting bone health. Yeah. This research is funded in part by Agriculture Development Fund. Could this study, do you think, also have an impact on Saskatchewan's pulse industry? For sure. So, you know, uh, Saskatchewan is a leader in producing pulses such as yellow peas, lentils, chickpeas, and they export most of the pulses. And the domestic consumption, so across North America, is quite low. And so hopefully this study, 
improves the domestic consumption of pulses. And, you know, pulses, we're hoping to show that it has this unique benefit for improving bone health. But in general, you know, consumption of pulses is good for other conditions such as uh, prevention of cardiovascular disease, prevention of diabetes, which is quite important across North America. Just before we let you go, Phil, one study at a time, of course, but are you planning on looking at any other types of non-dairy milk? I know a lot of people are drinking oat milk, it seems like right now. Yeah. So, you know, the three milks we're comparing are, you know, uh, dairy milk, the pea-based beverage, and a low-protein almond milk, uh, just like we did with the adolescent study. Uh, it would be interested, interesting to look at uh, other milks, but uh, to have three groups to compare is what is feasible for now. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the, and then the pea protein seems to be uh, high quality. Like, there are other labs that have recently shown that uh, pea protein is very similar to dairy protein uh, for stimulating muscle protein synthesis uh, in conjunction with resistance training. So it looks like there's something in the pea protein that's quite beneficial. Interesting. Phil, thanks so much for your time this morning. Yeah, no problem at all. Phil Tillbeck is a professor at the University of Saskatchewan's College of Kinesiology.